Good? Yep. It's recording? Yep. Yo, 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 what is going on guys? It is your boy, Optic Scumpy, here today bringing you my post-event vlog for MLG Orlando. As you can see in the backdrop, I'm in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Uh, I'm here for uh, maybe one more day. I'm not really sure when I'm gonna leave. I might leave tomorrow. But I just wanted to come out here because my friends from high school, actually the person behind the camera, my best friends from high school, uh, were literally on their way down to Florida as we were at the event. And my best friend from high school, literally, he calls me and he's like, yo, I'm at the hotel across from yours. And I was like, what? This was right after we won the event. I was like, what, dude? And he was across the street, came over to the bar and hung out. And he was like, yo, we're going to Cocoa Beach. Do you want to come? I was like, all right, let's go. That's the story behind this, though. And I will be going home tomorrow, probably. But still not 100% sure. But we're talking about MLG Orlando, what happened, how it was, some of the issues that people saw, the Kronos Max. We're gonna, we're gonna get that out of the way first, actually. So, people have been complaining a lot about the Cronus Max, and the Cronus Max, if you don't know what it is, it's the USBs that they use, so that Bluetooth lag doesn't happen at the tournament. So slow turn, the random spinning, I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but there's been like malfunctions with the PS4 controllers at tournaments because of Bluetooth waves, and I don't, I don't know the science behind it or how it works, but they basically use this cord, so that eliminates that, so there's no, issues with controllers but it does put an input lag on the controller which makes it like seem whenever you're turning it makes it feel delayed it makes it feel slow and choppy and people don't like it obviously the pros it's hard to play with because whenever you don't play with it and practice it with practice with it at home every day and go to a tournament it's like it's not a brand new game but it is really really different and some people just have problems adjusting to it so the Kronos Max I mean my team doesn't mind it we haven't really had any issues with it but a lot of people have been speaking out against it and like complaining about it but there's nothing the MLG can do that's that's how it has to be there's nothing that they can do about it to fix the issue um, other than not use them but in that case then again you might run into problems other than that though the event was great we had a great time there um, we didn't really get to go out much the hotel was beautiful there was a awesome pool in the back and there was a bar at the pool and it was great but like I said again we couldn't go because we were playing the whole time but the venue everything was just insane MLG always MLG events are the best events by far every single time in terms of scheduling in terms of the event how many spectators there are the, you know the atmosphere MLG events are always top-notch uh, they're basically like UMGs but on a bigger scale so MLG did a great job Thank you guys once again for the hospitality, and I'm not just saying that because we won, but thank you MLG. But let's talk about the tournament a little bit. Uh, talk about. Uh, also, I want to talk about this first though. The our practice, that was like the best practice I've ever got on any Call of Duty team leading up to a tournament. Like a lot of people were getting on us, like you guys need to practice, you guys got to practice. I mean, we knew we had to practice after we lost season two. We knew that we had to go home and we knew that we had to start playing a lot. So we went home, didn't miss a day for two weeks. We missed like a couple days after season two, but then whenever we really buckled in and everybody was like, all right, let's go, we're not missing a day. We didn't miss a single day leading up to uh, MLG Orlando, I don't think. And that was, it's great because the practice actually showed. We played Fringe Hardpoint once, which was our weakest map by far. We never won it. I don't know what happened. We used to be really good at it, but we just couldn't win it for like a three week period. And then finally we played it one time. One time at MLG Orlando against Elevate in the winner's finals and we won it. The practice paid off, practice makes perfect everybody. Remember that shit? But let's get into the matches and then we'll, we'll outro the video because I don't want this to run for too long. So let's start off with pool play. We played really, really well in pool play. We played uh, TK on Friday we played TK and LG a lot of people were looking forward to the LG match because those that was the team that had beaten us at season two playoffs we 3 0 TK pretty easily on the side station it was a good warm-up game we we had a couple of close maps with them but other than that we closed them out pretty easily and then LG again this was the match everyone wanted to see played them up on main stage and we beat them three to one we beat them in all the respawns our SND was a little bit shaky this event and if you can't tell I lost my voice I was screaming a lot at this event but I, my voice is so like raspy and it keeps cracking and it's horrible but moving on 
our S and D was sloppy this event. I will say that uh, whenever it needed to be good, it was good, but it was pretty sloppy for the most part. So I think we need to work on that. Maybe change a few things. But we lost the S and D to LG, but it was breach. We lost six five, and then the three respawns we beat them pretty convincingly. So two zero in pool play. Next morning, Saturday, we play against Kingsman, which was uh, Parasite and Miracles team. Uh, they played us pretty good. We. We knew going into that match, even if we lost, we slide first in the pool. So, I mean, we were going hard, but basically we were using that match as like warm up to get into Saturday. We were trying to warm up, practice the maps that we were playing. And it was it was a good game. We went last map with them, and we ended up clutching up on SND Redwood. And like I said, when we needed SND to be, SND to be good, it was good. So, that's good. Um, yeah, we beat them 3-2. to two. I mean, we weren't really too worried that we only beat them 3-2. to two. A lot of people were expecting a 3-0. We weren't really worried about it. We were just trying to win the match and, and move on to the, the bracket. So, moving on into bracket play. After uh, we played against Kingsman, we played against DT. Uh, DT's a good team. Uh, they, got, they got second place at the last tournament, and people were like sort of... I wouldn't say, I think people don't give them enough credit for how good of a team they actually are. People are like, you're going to destroy them, you're going to beat them easily. And it was like, no, these guys are a good team and we got to take them serious. So, played them on the side station. This was in quarterfinals. So, if we lost, we would have dropped to losers. So, we had to win this match. Uh, again, same thing as the LG series. Beat them in all the respawns pretty convincingly. On EVAC Uplink, we got like 16 points on bad side and beat them like 20 to 3 or something like that. But SND again. We lost, it was sloppy, but we won all the respawns, so like I said, again, practice was so key for this event. Practice made perfect, uh, definitely. So, beat DT, moving on into our harder matches, or the hardest matches now. We played against Rise. Now, this was the best match of the tournament. Hands down, this was the best match we played of the tournament in terms of us being able to battle back against adversity. We dropped 0-2 to them, map count. And this is in semifinals, so this isn't like pool play where if you lose, it just doesn't matter, you brush it off. No, this was this was semifinals. We had to win this match. We had to win this match. If you go through loser's bracket, you have to win two times in the grand finals. So whenever we went down 0-2, we were like, dude, if we, if we lose this match, it's going to be so hard for us to come back and win this tournament. Like, we're going to have to do some crazy shit to win this tournament. So we somehow brought it back. <laughs> we went down 0-2. Third map, Fringe Uplink, we won with a buzzer beater by Crim6 in like the last 15 seconds. The CTF, we 6 0 them on Breach, like just completely steamrolled them. And then again, going back to SND, when it needed to be good, it was good. We ended up beating them 6 1 on the last map, which was Stronghold, which is our best map. Thankfully, we got our best map the last map, but ended up beating them there. Moving on into finals, Elevate. Uh, this was actually who we played in winners, winners finals of the last MLG, which was in Anaheim. So we knew what to expect. Uh, we 3 0'd them, beat them on fringe hardpoint, like I said earlier. Uh, the SND, I can't even re remember what SND we played them on, but we beat them in that, and then Uplink, again, beat them in that with an insane interception at the end of the game by Damon. I know you guys remember that one because he got the MVP of that series and the tournament. Good. Everybody's gonna get, gotta give Damon his props. He played incredible all weekend long. He played so good, and I'm so happy for him. But <clears throat> he got the interception, 3 0'd them. Next. Moving on, last match of the tournament against Envy. This was what everyone wanted to see. This was in the grand finals. They had to beat us two times to actually win the tournament. So, first series, we went down 0-2. We put ourselves in a hole, and it was much like the Rise series. The first two maps that we lost, we were like, we, I feel like we outplayed them on those maps, but we had like super, super small mistakes at the wrong moments in the game that lost us those maps. So Breach, we lost by like 30, but we had complete rotation and died. The SND, we had like two 4v2s that we lost, and then the uplink, or no, we started coming back to actually. The uplink we won, CTF we won, and then last map, which was Fringe, SND, which is probably our worst SND, we go up 3-0, and then we lose six rounds in a row to close the tournament out. Six rounds in a row. I was so pissed. But after that, we regained came back in the next series, came out strong, and ended up 3 0 them. I think we can 3 0 any team in the game as long as we win our SND. Like I said, whenever SND needed to be good in the last series, it was good. We won 6 0 on Redwood SND in the second series, just absolutely played it flawlessly. Everybody on the team played it flawlessly. The hard point we won in the last like 40 seconds, we clutched up, and then third map, 
we go we came out swinging on fringe up like and ended up winning the tournament so that is going to do it for the video though guys thank you so much for watching i hope you all enjoy i'll see you all in tomorrow's video and as always this was your brother's cubby happy <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs>